Welcome back. Hong Kong is taking another shot at reviving the property sector. The government is said to be sticking to its cap on the sale of subsidized homes. It's looking to limit the sale to 9,000 units annually for the next five years. Low interest rates, government financing, and a sharp correction in home prices seem to suggest that the sector has hit bottom. But views are mixed on whether the property market is actually on the rise. Now, in today's Sector Watch, I'm joined by Peter Churchhouse, an advisor for Morgan Stanley Dean Witter for more in Hong Kong's property sector. He was formerly head of property research. So, Peter, you think Hong Kong residential property prices will go up in 2002. What makes you so bullish? Well, I think uh, we've got uh, two or three factors, really. Firstly, we've got record low interest rates and the best affordability that we've ever seen in Hong Kong. Uh, secondly, we're looking to see some sort of modest economic recovery, particularly in the second half. And we're looking at a very modest supply scenario. So I think the combination of those uh, three factors is going to lead uh, to some upside over the course of the year. Uh, I don't expect it to be much. I expect it to be more in the region of around 10% or so, uh, but up, not down nonetheless. So uh, a, a relatively modest uh, upbeat scenario, I think, for this year. But we still keep hearing that there's this massive oversupply out there in Hong Kong. What's the story on the ground? <laughs> It's simply not true. That was yesterday's story. Uh, that was a 1999-2000 story. If you go through and add up the inventory that all of the developers have in their portfolios right now of completed units and units that are not completed but still uh, under construction but being sold right now, the supply scenario is actually very modest indeed and in fact is running about 20% below the long-term average of supply that Hong Kong has absorbed very readily over the last 20 to 25 years. So uh, that was yesterday's story. It's not today's story. Supply, I would describe as adequate, not excessive. But the rental market's outlook's pretty bleak to most. Any chances of recovery there? And in the, in the residential market, uh, uh, I think the luxury end of the market is very soft right now, as we've seen a lot of consolidation in the financial services uh, sector. But bear in mind that the luxury market is a very tiny part of the overall market. It represents really less than 3% of the total private sector housing market. So perhaps sometimes we exaggerate its significance. As far as commercial property is concerned, uh, again, we've seen a very soft uh, last year down 20, 25% on average for rents. Bear in mind they went up between 48 and 75% the year before. So net, net over the last two years, we're up about 30% uh, in commercial rents. I expect to see vacancies will be very, very tight this year. We have very modest supply of office space coming on stream. So I think, I think we're going to see vacancy rates very, uh, very modest, around 7 8%. That bodes well, I think, for some sort of uptick in rents, commercial rents in the latter part of this year. I'm again looking for something in the region of 15% overall this year. And how much of an incentive is the government's sale limit this year on subsidized homes? Well, I've never been of the view that the subsidized housing really competed very strongly uh, with the private sector anyway. It, it's aimed at a completely different uh, group of people. However, having said that, uh, definitely it has impacted uh, consumer sentiment. I think it will have an impact. There is no justification for the subsidized housing uh, sales in Hong Kong right now with affordability as strong as it is in the private sector. You don't need this government subsidized housing. So I think the government has recognized that and I think it will prove at the margin will prove positive for the housing sector in the private uh, arena uh, throughout this year. Now analysts are expecting that shares in developers to lock in better gains when you compare that with property investment companies. With a worsening outlook in the rental market, would you make more money among developers? Well, quite frankly, some of the uh, uh, residential developer stocks are, are trading, the big stocks are trading very close to their net asset values right now. Uh, for example, Chung Kong uh, is trading at around its asset value. Sun Kai Properties, we think, has got 15 or 20 percent upside to go, and a bit more perhaps for Henderson Land. And some of the smaller property developers are trading very, very cheaply, trading at 40, 50, 60 percent discounts to their net asset value. I think you'll see those uh, discounts narrow over the course of the year as we see the residential market pick up. Stocks like Kerry Properties, HKR for example, these stocks are extremely cheap but they're not very liquid. 
As far as the office uh, investment companies are concerned, uh, we've seen a big bounce in one or two of these stocks in the last couple of months or so since, uh, since the, uh, the September uh, crisis in the markets. Uh, but we still see some upside here. Stocks such as Wharf and Hong Kong Land in particular are two stocks that I would focus on here. Deep, reasonably deep discounts to NAV, very good locked-in earnings, guaranteed earnings growth, and very good dividend yield. So those stocks, I think, have a good 20 to 30 percent upside from here through the course of this year. Okay, some analysts are suggesting that investors should wait until the end of the first quarter to see where the market goes. Would you wait that long? I'm not sure I'd wait that long, quite frankly. Uh, it's very difficult to pick the bottoms and tops precisely of markets. I think my sense here generally is if you get uh, somewhere within the 5 or 10% of the top or the bottom of a market, you're doing very well. I sense very often if you get the exact top or the exact bottom of a market, it's more by good luck than good management. So I think if you can get somewhere within that 5 or 10% range, you're doing very well. Uh, so my sense here is you want to be overweight this sector, modestly overweight weight and as the market improves uh, you could perhaps increase weightings but uh, I don't think you want to be underweight the sector right now uh, at this point uh, neutral to overweight I think is where you want to be positioned okay thanks Peter Peter Churchhouse of Morgan Stanley Dean Witter in Hong Kong